ओके सो इन कंटिन्यूएशन टू दी प्राइम्स एंड यूलर फाइव फंक्शन एंड चाइनीज रिमाइंडर थ्योरम विच वी डिस्कस्ड इन प्रीवियस क्लासेस फॉर फॉर्मिंग दी फाउंडेशन फॉर ए सीमेट्रिक की क्रिप्टोग्राफी वी विल बी लर्निंग टू मोर थ्योरम्स विच आर कॉल्ड एज फर्मेट्स थ्योरम एंड यूलर्स थ्योरम ओके सो दिस फर्मेट्स थ्योरम it has these two versions okay a uh, first and second versions so it says that if we have a number p which is a prime and uh, another number a and both of these numbers are coprimes now this condition if you see at this condition so it says that gcd of a and p is equal to 1 that means a and p are relatively prime right so if we have these two numbers wherein uh, uh, this p is prime and uh, a and p they are relatively prime so this this expression this this condition holds true right and this condition is a raised to p minus 1 is congruent to one mode p so we can use this expression while uh, solving you know uh, the algorithms which we will discuss further because uh, uh, the the algorithm which we will be discussing in uh, asymmetric key cryptography that will be using a you know a huge number of powers over here so they, these these theorems make it easy for us if they can be applied as it is right so this this condition this is the first version of permits little theorem and it says that a raised to p minus 1 is congruent to one mode p right so i'll i'll show you some examples also that uh, how do we use this uh, theorem and second version says that a raised to p is congruent to a mod p so this this uh, version is uh, uh, you know carried out from uh, this first version so what we have uh, simply done is we have multiplied both the sides with a and uh, hence we have got this and this this uh, expression right so this is a raised to p is congruent to a mod p here this is one mod p right so this is fermat's theorem now uh, these are uh, the examples so uh, so that the the idea of fermat theorem it, it will become clear to you so we have to find the result of 6 raised to 10 mod 11 now this is you see uh, we have you know a large power over here so it's not easy to calculate it um you know you you multiply 6 10 times and these are you know very very small number so if you have larger number then it becomes a problem so over this we can apply the first version of fermat theorem so we have the 6 uh, 6 raised to 10 uh, mod 11 so this will be equal to 1 1 because this is congruent to one mod n let me show it to you so this is congruent to one mod n so we can write this that expression which is 6 raised to 10 mod 11 in this form right so how we can do this so this is the first version of fermat's theorem uh, where p is 11 okay so if we write this you know you consider this 6 as a this is p minus 1 and this is p right so this is p to p minus 1 will be 10 and uh, this uh, uh, 6 we have as a so the first uh, version of fermat theorem holds true for this so we can you know simply uh, just just by using the theorem without any calculation we can find out that uh, its value is 1 right so that is how this these these theorems help us now this is the example of uh, uh, second version so we have to find the result of 3 raised to 12 mod 11 now uh, yeah, uh, yes uh, here uh, you have to uh, you know check for the condition of uh, p being a prime and 6 and 11 being coprimes right so, so the condition will be there so the second example is 3 raised to 12 mod 11 so here this exponent 12 and the modulus they are not same fine so with this substitution this can be solved using fermat's little theorem so 
3 mod 12 mod 11 can be written as now this is 3 raised to 12 we can write it as 3 raised to 11 into 3 because when you multiply the numbers the powers get added so as a, you know if, if you see it as a single number so this is 3 raised to 12 right now we can write this whole expression as 3 raised to 11 mod 11 into 3 mod 11 right so this will be this one this one will hold um, uh, you know the the second version true for it you can see it from here so this one is see a raised to p congruent to a mod p so here this p and the power they are same right so the second version is true for this so the result will be you know it, it is congruent to a mod p so we have its result as 3 right because 3 uh, raised to 11 mod 11 will give you 3 mod 11 right so the, the result will be 3 obviously so 3 mod 11 will give you 3 so the the second part of this expression is same uh, se jo mila hai, 3 mod 11 right so this part of this expression gives you 3 and this part again gives you 3 so 3 into 3 gives you 9 and 9 mod 11 gives you value 9 so you know uh, having uh, so much of power of a number uh, so the, this permit theorem makes uh, makes it easy for us to calculate it for you know calculating the the uh, you know exponential powers right so that is the uh, that is the advantage of these theorems now this permit theorem uh, Okay, as before that, uh, I'll tell you about these multiplicative inverses as well, which we can solve using these theorems. So now we have another way of uh, solving the multiplicative inverses as well. Uh, so earlier we were solving it using extended Euclidean algorithm, but now we can use these facts of uh, Fermat theorem and Euler theorem, which we will discuss, you know, in the next slide uh, to, to find out the multiplicative inverses. So it says that if you need to find out the inverse of A, okay, this is A inverse. So that will be equal to inverse of A uh, against mode P that will be equal to A raised to P minus 2 mode P. Okay, so these are some examples for this. So here we need to find out uh, the inverse of 8 for mode 17, right? So if we use this expression, so uh, what, what do we get? The value of P is 17 over here. This is P, this is A, right? So 17 minus 2, it will give you 8 raised to 15 mode 17, right? So now you need to, uh, you know, find out the value of this expression, 8 raised to 15 mode 17. So if any of the uh, Fermat theorem or Euler theorem applies on it directly you can go with that otherwise we can use the factorization method as well to find out the the the, the value of this particular expression right because this expression is the multiplicative inverse of 8 so this is the method which we can use uh, you know uh, rather than uh, using the extended Euclidean algorithm now, how do we implement factorization in this? So, this power 15, we can, you know, make factors out of it. So, what we can do is, we will simply, for solving, you know, uh, uh, you know these, these kind of large powers or uh, the for, for finding out the multiplicative inverses or simply for calculating such expressions, what do we do? Okay, let me tell you that how do we... Uh, factorize it how do we use the factorization okay so we find out the value of 8 raised to 1 mode 17 right so it will be 8 mode 17 so its value will be 8 right then we will double this power and find the value so this the next value which we will be finding out will be 
8 raised to 2, 8 square. 8 square mode 17. Okay, so this value, if we find out, this will be 64 mode uh, 17. So it will give you 13, right? Next, again, we will double this power. Uh, um, so we will be having 8 raised to 4. 8 raised to 4 mode 17 well, when we calculate so you can write 8 raised to 4 as 8 square into 8 square right so you do not need to calculate you know uh, this 8 raised to 4 you can use the value which you have calculated previously so 8 raised to 4 mode 17 will give you 13 into 13 okay 13 into 13 mode 17 you have to find out so it will give you uh, the value of mode as 16 when you calculate it. Okay, so these are the values which I have already calculated. Next, we will calculate 8 raised to 16. Okay, let me write here 8 raised to 16. Uh, sorry, 8 raised to 8. Right, 8 raised to 8 will be uh, 2 times if you use this value okay 8 raised to 4 into 8 raised to 4 so 16 into 16 mode 17 you have to find out okay so instead of you know dealing with uh, these large numbers you the the values which you have calculated before this step you are using those those values so 8 raised to 8 uh, mode 17 will give you 1 right so now this 8 raised to 15 can be written as 8 raised to 8 into 8 raised to 4 into 8 raised to 2 into 8 raised to 1. So let me write it over here so it will be easy for you to understand. 8 raised to 8 into 8 raised to 4 into 8 raised to 2 into 8 raised to 1. 1. So, what does it make? 8 plus 4, 12 plus 2, 14 plus 1, 15. Right? So, 15 we have. So, what can we do? We can just simply multiply the values which we have got from here and find the value of that multiplication against mode 17. Right, so that will be the value of 8 raised to 15 mode 17. So these values are 1 into 16 into 13 into 8. So instead of multiplying this 8 15 times, we need to multiply these these small numbers, right? Because when you multiply 8 uh, with 8, then again the result with 8, and this process goes on until you reach the 15th level. Okay, so that will give you a very large number. So here we need to, we, we are dealing with very small numbers. So this factorization helps you to, you know, uh, uh, to compute these kind of expressions very easily. So when you find uh, this, uh, uh, you know, uh, this multiplication, which is 1 into 16 into 13 into 8 uh, and mode 17, then the result you get is 15, right? So that will be the mode uh, that will be the uh, answer which we are looking for now this 15 is what this is the inverse of 8 for mode 17 right now these numbers are small numbers so we can use you know simply uh, uh, the extended euclidean uh, euclidean algorithm as well so for the large numbers so you, you know uh, for these kind of numbers we can go with uh, the, the this method of finding out the multiplicative inverse so this is another method which you can use right so this fermat theorem also helps you to find out the multiplicative inverses okay now this fermat theorem is a special case of euler's theorem now this theorem is uh, you know you can uh, say it, it in, in in any way euler theorem is the generalized form and Fermat theorem is a special a special case of Euler theorem. 
now it also has two versions so if we have you know these numbers a and n where gcd of a and n is equal to 1 which means a and n are co primes they are relatively prime right so this condition will hold true for this so which says that a raised to phi n now phi is if you remember we discussed euler totient function to waha pe humne phi phi n use kiya tha right so this is that phi function so a raised to phi n is congruent to one mod n right so this condition will hold true if a and n are relatively prime now its second version says a raised to k into phi n plus 1 will be congruent to a mod n right so that is the difference here you get the answer as 1 here you get the answer as a right so these 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 theorems we use extensively in rsa okay so that i will tell you that this is the generalized version and the euler uh, sorry the fermat theorem is a special case of euler theorem right so this is phi n so if you remember uh, this phi n if n is prime it was equivalent to n minus 1 okay i'll show you the yes this is the euler uh, totient function so here you can see this this uh, uh, four uh, you know uh, uh, four rules i told you for uh, uh, for finding out this uh, phi fun the value of this phi function so here this phi p is equal to p minus 1 if p is a prime so yahan pe fermat theorem mein bhi what we have taken only this case of phi n okay this is p minus 1 so phi n is n minus 1 in case p is uh, in case uh, uh, p is prime so yahan pe humne p ko simply n se replace kar diya hai that it. okay rest the things are same so uh, we can we that is why we can call uh, this uh, uh, fermat theorem as a special case of euler's theorem so i'll show you some examples of euler theorem as well so you can see uh, that uh, we we here we are finding the result of 6 raised to 24 mod 35 so we have 6 raised to 24 mod 35 so we can write it as uh, you know if you find uh, the value of uh, this uh, uh, 35 and if you want to apply that uh, first version so you can find out that the value of 535 Okay, if I uh, I'll just calculate it for you. So, phi thirty five we have. Okay, now thirty five is not a prime number, but we can uh, make its factor which are prime. So, those factors are uh, those factors are five and seven, right? Five and seven they are prime numbers. So, if we write it like this. fine so now what we can do we can deal with both of them separately so this is it will become this expression right now this can be written as this is equivalent to yes phi n is equal to n minus 1 so this will become 4 5 minus 1 into this will become 6 okay and the result is 24 right so we can write this 24 as phi 35 because both of these values are same right so 6 raised to phi 35 mod 35 so the first condition will hold true for this this one right so this is phi n a raised to phi n and here this is mod n right so this is so its result will be 1 because this condition will be congruent to 1 mod 35 so 1 mod 35 will give you 1 right another example is this one so we need to find out the result of 20 raised to 62 mod 77 
so what we can do for this is one way is this one in which uh, you will be using uh, the second version okay another way of using it is you find out the value of phi 77 okay so 77 ki value jab hum find out karenge aur iske jab hum factors banayenge to wo banenge 7 into 11 right okay aur iska ho jayega 6 7 minus 1 phi hai ye right so 6 into 10 it will give you 60 fine so this thing we can write as uh, you know uh, 62 jo hai it we can uh, th this thing we can write as uh, 20 raised to 60 into 20 raised to 2 fine so 60 ke liye first wali condition true ho jayegi uh, sorry jo um, uh, is, is example ke liye jo true hui hai so this thing we can write as this particular expression right so 20 i'll just write it so that it will become clear to you 25 77 right mode 77 into 20 raised to 2 mode 77 so this value this part of the expression will become 1 and you need to calculate only 20 raised to 2 mode 77 so this thing also if we use the second version, we are getting the same thing. 20 raised to 2 more 77 is left. So this value will be 15. So a simple calculation and this will be 400 more, more 77. So this we can find out. So this will be the result. So, you know, such a, uh, such a huge power is, you know, uh, is being calculated using the Euler theorem. Now we can use this Euler theorem for finding out the multiplicative inverses as well as we did with the Fermat theorem. So we can we can do it with the Euler theorem or the Fermat theorem. If you are using this Euler theorem, then uh, you know if if we have this value of phi end with us, we can go with this expression. So the inverse of a will be a raised to phi n minus 1 mod n. So I'll show you some examples for this. So you are to find out the inverse of 8 for mod 77. So this expression says that you need to subtract 1 from this. Okay. So this phi 77 we can find out and then we can, uh, you know, uh, just subtract 1 from it and then find mod 77. Right, so this will give you this phi 77 as we calculated in this slide. This is this is 60, right? So its value is 60. 60 minus 1 gives you 50, 59. So 59 mod 77 is is uh, expression pe fir se Euler theorem ya Fermat theorem nahi lagegi. So we can go with the factorization. Okay, 859 ke factors hum log kaise bana sakte hain? We can go with 8 raised to uh, 8 raised to 1, then 2, then 8, then 16, and then 32. So all of these numbers will make 59. Okay, or one by one, we will calculate it in the previous example. Mein tha. And then we'll, we, we will be simply multiplying them and we will find their uh, mode 77. Okay, so as an answer, we will get 29 for it. Okay, so this is how we can uh, find out the multiplicative inverse using Euler theorem and the factorization method.